Cesar. Thank you. The temperature in the Bay Area today was 100 degrees. <laughs> now we call that part of our um, our Indian summer and it usually isn't that warm but we've had a couple of really warm days. I want to thank Jose and I want to thank Brother Ken and the campus ministry staff of your university, Rutgers University, for inviting me here this evening. We're scheduled to go to 9.30, so usually when I give these presentations, I usually will speak about 35 to 40 minutes, then I'll open it up for questions. So we'll go till about 9.30 and I'll do my very best to try and, and answer as many questions as possible. This topic, is a very emotionally charged one. And everybody has an opinion. But not very many people know very much about this. And until I became the exorcist of the Diocese of San Jose, I have to be honest with you as well, I knew almost nothing about this too. So I've been involved as the exorcist of the Diocese for the last seven years. I want to start off this evening by giving you some very good news. Satan has been defeated. Now I can say that with some Feverino because in the Catholic tradition the cross is the central most important symbol of our faith. You walk into a Catholic church, most Catholic churches, you'll see a cross or a crucifix in a very prominent location. The cross reminds us that Satan was defeated by Christ's sacrifice on the cross. And that therefore when we gather as church in the Catholic tradition and the, really broadly the Christian tradition, we gather with a whole different disposition. We gather with a disposition of hope, we gather in a disposition of confidence and we gather in a disposition of thanksgiving. The word Eucharist comes from the Greek word meaning thanksgiving. And there's a direct relationship between the cross and the Eucharist. It's like, why did Jesus, first of all, mandate, and I say this at my parish all the time, the 11th commandment is do this in memory of me. Now, on the one hand, the, the early church were all made up of Jewish people until Paul, 20 years after Jesus ascended, began his ministry to the non-Jews, the Gentiles. But the gathering of people in faith to celebrate the life of Christ through the Eucharist was meant to be an expression of thanksgiving for the resurrection. But the resurrection would not have happened without the crucifixion. And so when Christ sacrifices himself on the cross, that sacrifice defeats once and for all the reality of Satan. It doesn't defeat, doesn't, it doesn't destroy Satan. The scriptures say that very clearly. But the sacrifice of Christ on the cross defeats Satan. And that from that time on, Satan's power involving the human race is limited. At the end of time, whenever that is to be, the scriptures are very clear about Satan will be destroyed. So I think it's important for me, and as I've done this in other talks, to start out with that statement and that reference point because from the time that the Second Vatican Council ended in 1965 until largely just a few years ago, Comments about Satan, teachings about Satan, mention of the word Satan has largely gone asleep. And I think the reason for that was not deliberate, but in the Second Vatican Council, when we began to understand Christ in a more balanced, what we say Christology, a more balanced understanding of Jesus as both human and divine, several things took place. First of all, the environment in the church buildings themselves took on a major renovation. 
And so we went oftentimes away from long halls where there was a, lot, a long distance sometimes between the altar, the tabernacle, and the assembly. We went to a kind of architecture that was much more in the round, that was much more receptive, where the people of God gathered around the sacred altar. And there was much more of a sense of the church as being a people of God. When we began moving away from long distant halls to more cir circular environments, Christ became much more approachable. In the same renewal period, priests began being taught how to preach on the scriptures, which we call homilies. As opposed to when I was growing up, and I'm 58 years old now, when I grew up, there was, not just, there was no such thing as a priest giving a homily or preaching the word. It was much more preaching on topics that may not have anything to do with the word proclaimed. And so when we began really using the scriptures as the primary source of instruction for us as Catholics, it meant that we had to begin looking at Christ as an approachable God. Because if we were going to talk about Jesus, we had to know Jesus. Not just know about him, but we had to know him. And in order to understand and know him, we had to know both his divine and his human nature. Well, when that happened, there was a shift in the whole understanding of sin. Because there was a shift in the understanding of God. And while we did not lose the judgmental side of God, we began to stress a more merciful side to God. And so therefore sin, the categories of sin that I grew up with, mortal and venial, which still exist, they became very fuzzy. And they became very blurred. And as sin became blurred, Satan became blurred. Because evil was no longer as clearly defined.